see. 17. Darn it. Fifteen plus six, twenty-one. Right. Decent job. Yeah, I broke a thing. Emian interglacial period. Oh, I can't fail at my stress relievers, please. Oh, here we go in the cave. Please don't be a ten box thing. Are curses. I am getting better. Maybe I don't have to get you guys to go away. Let's see. We've got a 10. I've come up with a method that's kind of helping me now. This has to be an 8. This has to be 6. This has to be 5. This has to be 5. This has to be 4. Oops. 4. This has to be three. Uh, that's one, one. This has to be a two, and this has to be a two. Okay, so so far, I know that nothing will be above this. I know there will be nothing in between here. I know there will be nothing in this aisle. Or in this aisle. And I know there will be nothing here, here, and there won't be anything here. Okay, so with that in mind, let's see where we what we can see. Hmm. This is where the guesswork starts to pop in a little bit. So I usually start going just because, and then if that would work, and that would work, and I can't go here. Oh, and this can't actually be here and here at the same time. So maybe it could be this. And then one. And then three. And then that has to be two. Can't be here. I'm gonna have to redo some things. Possibly like this. Let's see, one, three, one, four. This is two, three, this needs to be two, four. Starts to get tricky though. Tricky, tricky. What if I did that? It's two, four, four, two, two, one. Oh, actually, this, is, this has to be at the end. Okay, that kind of helps me a little bit, I think. I think I think I have it. I think I did it. Let's see. Three. Oh no, there's one too many here. Oh, 
but which is okay because I actually don't need that there. Okay, three, one, 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 three, two, one, four, two, two, four, five, six, two, six, and ten. Two, 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 one, one, two, one, two, three, two, four, five, one, three, five, six, one, and eight. Check. Hey! Getting better at this. Context. Give me some of that sweet, sweet context. Context is the position of the object when it is first uncovered, revealing its association with its settings and what stratigraphic layer it is in. By knowing its exact location, archaeologists can determine its age, how it was deposited, and even the function of the object. Ugh, <sighs> that wasn't too bad. I stared at the wet screen, one hand swishing the drenched tray while the other held the water hose. Dirt and debris vanished through the holes, leaving the larger objects for examining. Nothing stood out at first. A few bone fragments I overlooked. Occasionally, I, I occasionally, I casually dropped them into the plastic cup and returned to my search. And then the music stopped. Oh no! I picked up a rock with a cream tinge to it, admiring the color before I noticed smooth groves on the on one side. Any curiosity I had plunged to the pit of my stomach when I realized what it was. Oh no. I found a flint in my tomassage. Calm down, Melissa. It's not like you're the first person to do this, or the last. It happened to Joan recently, and another student did the same thing. Still, it sucks. I turned it over and raised an eyebrow when I noticed lattice cracks on one side. It looked as if it shattered inwardly. The only person who calls me Little Flower is, um, Augustine. But he usually calls me Petite Fleur. I'll, 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 I'll say it's Augustine for now. Did you find something particularly interesting in your tamisage, Little Flower? Yes. I nearly dropped the specimen and tottered on the concrete block. Oh, Augustine. Um, yeah. I guess I did. Before I could plop it back onto the tray, Augustine extended his hand. I reluctantly surrendered the flint, dreading his reaction. Do you have any idea what you have found? Uh, flint? His hand squeezed the stone briefly before displaying it, one finger tracing the fractures. Oh cr- I'm doomed! Burnt flint, Melissa. He stole a glance at my cup, which had its layer 3D RG clearly marked with a black marker. And we had yet to find one in this layer. Now one has turned up with lost context in the Tamassage. Disappointment flickered on his face, and I turned off the faucet, anticipating a lecture. Uh, at least I was able to pinpoint which layer it came from? Yes, but we will never know how it was positioned. Can you explain what kind of layer you're working on? Um, it's during a cooling period, and there are more clay sediments. It's roughly 120,000 years old, give or take. It's also during a time we have little information on. Everything we find is extremely important, and finding it in context will help us piece together what happened all those years ago. Right. Hendrik went over this with me when I didn't fill out the grid. Uh, um, is there something significant about burnt flint? Gosh, I was at square one again with my amateur questions. No matter how much I learned, it felt like it was never enough. If flint is heated up to 450 degrees Celsius, its previous irradiation is erased. We can then date it to the last time it was used in a hearth or fire. However, it is highly contaminated at this point, and being able to accurately date it will be nigh impossible. W well we know the layer's age, so we could safely guess- Melissa, do you even understand the gravity of this find? The layer's age does not always equal the age of the object. 
without its position recorded. We have no idea how it ended up in the lair. I'm severely disappointed in you. We assigned your square since Sherry's students have always performed outstandingly, and I thought you would be no exception. There was a shuffle as Shoji entered the room from outside. He must have t sensed the tense atmosphere since he timidly walked past us. We exchanged glances and he seemed unsure of what to do. He stalled, but Augustine picked up on it. He barked something in French and Shoji flinched. <laughs> wow, he ran. Like a puppy being dragged into the night rain, Shoji unwillingly exited the room. After he disappeared, Augustine tapped the metal rim of the screening platform to catch my attention. The lecture continued for a good 15 minutes, and I felt horrible for anyone who wanted to wet screen or merely pass through. Finally, it reached a merciful conclusion. Here, yeah, I'm returning this to you. You sure you don't want it? No, it is part of the wet screening finds now. It would have been crucial if it was found in its original position. He left, and I guiltily dropped the flint into the cup, feeling it was too profound to be mixed with bone shards. <sighs> it would have been better if I had overlooked it and accidentally tossed it away. I chewed my lip bitterly as I tried to focus on the wet screen, but my concentration was broken. Sometimes my vision blurred from the pressure behind my eyes. Defeated, I managed to give the wet screening one more look before I turned the tray over and dumped the rest of the debris into the pit below. People walked out of the cave, and a simple glance at the clock indicated that it was noon. Maybe some lunch would calm me down. Can you even eat, girl? <sighs> Sighing, I tore at the Swiss cheese absentmindedly, my fingers fumbling as I tried to contain my feelings. It was a battle, though. All my mistakes finally caught up to me, and my confidence melted like cheese in hot soup. Um, Mel? Y yeah Are you okay? You seem out of it. Just tired. Why do you ask? Because you're missing your soup. Huh? I glanced down and realized I had a mountain of cheese fragments piled up beside my bowl. Whether it was the waste of food, or the transparency of my emotions, my eyes watered again, threatening to spill out. Blinking, I held back a hiccuping sob and stood, nearly tripping over the bench in my haste. Mentally apologizing to the poor soul who had to clean up my mess, I retreated to my tent. Oh, poor Melissa. Moments later, I curled up on the air mattress, my head buried against my knees. Warm tears rolled down my cheeks, and I occasionally wiped my face against my pants. The failure of an archaeologist. I couldn't even distinguish flint from rubble. This was a mistake after all. I can't do this. I want to go home. Sherry must regret bringing me over. I heard footsteps approach the tent area, and I struggled to keep my crying to a minimum. My tent was closed, save for a small slit to allow some fresh air in. I sniffed, but quieted down, not wanting to disturb the person who was probably grabbing a phone or some other possession. However, the steps halted in front of my tent, and I glanced up curiously, spotting a dark outline through the fabric. Hmm? Mel, are you in there? Recognizing DeAndre's accent, I wiped my eyes. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, sorry for leaving like that. I needed some time to myself. Do you want to talk about it? Maybe I should. Sure. I crawled over to the flap and unzipped it to give DeAndre access before scooting back. DeAndre gingerly entered the tent and sat down. He straightened his posture as best he could and glanced around the tent matter-of-factly. It's sure cramped in here. It's a one-person tent. What did you expect, you burly rugby star? <laughs> his expression reverted to a serious one, 
once he saw my pitiful curled up position. What happened, Mel? Your folks alright and all that? My family's fine. It's about the excavation itself. I expected him to throw another question at me, but he waited for my explanation. <sighs> After a few breaths to calm myself down, I launched into it. I found burnt flint in the wet screen. And that's bad. What's worse, Augustine saw it, and I had to listen to him for 20 minutes, telling me how disappointed he was. And that's not the first mistake I've made either. I forgot to draw on the grid map, and bones keep falling apart in the lab in the beginning. I thought I got better when Augustine quizzed me about my square, but... The tears returned and my voice cracked as I continued. Now I'm second-guessing myself. I'm starting... I'm starting to feel I stumbled in the wrong direction career-wise. I can't... I, I can't seem to get anything right. I feel like I wasted my time. Sherry's time. And the expenses my parents covered to get me here. Realizing who I was talking to, I jerked my head up and hastily rubbed my eyes. I'm sorry, you you had it worse than I did and retook the course, and here I am. Hey, hey, it's okay. Don't compare your problems to mine. Aw, DeAndre reached out and gently brushed the thumb under my eye. This is something really affecting you right now. Don't belittle your feelings. Not only that, this is something you want to do, right? This is extremely important to you. My lip quivered, and I flung myself at DeAndre, wrapping my arms around his neck. He returned the embrace, one hand cradling my head as I buried my face in his shoulder. I felt pathetic, but I wanted to cry, and DeAndre had no qualms about it. He lightly combed through my hair and muttered the occasional, There, there. Gradually, my body stopped trembling from the sobs, and I relaxed against him. His poor shirt was drenched in my tears and nose gunk. Oh my goodness, I do that all the time to my hubby. <laughs> oh, Melissa. I perched my chin on his shoulder. Sorry about that, DeAndre. Thanks for letting me cry it all out. Don't apologize for having emotions. And I totally stained your shirt, wiped my nose on it and everything. <laughs> uh, it's only a shirt. Nothing a washing machine can't fix. Still, you come out of here and people see all this snot on your shirt, they're like, what happened to you? I parted from him reluctantly. He rested his hands on my shoulders and gave me a reassuring grin. Feel better? Yeah. Sweet as. Not sure how good my word is, but I know you've been working your, your arse off here. Don't let some mistakes stop you. Besides, this is your first real dig. If Kyler can still screw up, I think it's only to be expected that you blunder from time to time, too. Wait, Kyler messed up somewhere? Huh. <laughs> I was asking Hendrik what some bone was, and he said he didn't know. A typical Hendrik response. <laughs> yes. Good old know-it-all Hendrik. Anyway, Kyler jumped in, saying it was some second knuckle bone of whatever extinct animal, and Sherry corrected him. I can tell he looks up to her, so seeing his reaction was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> we shared a chuckle, and I wiped any remaining tears from my cheeks. <sighs> Thanks for coming to check on me, DeAndre. It's no problem, Mel. You helped me out, too. He fondly tussled my hair and then briefly glanced down to see the damage done to his shirt. Uh, cute, Mel. Hey, you're the one who said it was only a shirt. Pouting, I shoved him away and he simply laughed. <laughs> Glad you're back to your usual self. Yeah, thanks. I'll rejoin everyone after a small break. After saying goodbye, DeAndre crawled out of the tent, leaving me with my thoughts again. However, I didn't feel as depressed as I did before he visited. I was still a little sore over the whole Tomasage incident, but it was too early for me to give up and declare archaeology the wrong path for me. I could do this. Aw, oh, DeAndre, you were so good to her. Oh, that was so sweet. 
I'm melting in sugar over here from how sweet he was with her. Hmm. Ah, just needed some good old drink. Morning already. Thanks to DeAndre, I felt better today. Ah, I'm in my pajamas again! You can do it, Mel. Just treat it like a fresh start. If I quit after every hiccup, I wouldn't even be in, a dan in dance competitions. This is no different. I can do it. Get some confidence, girl. You can do it. <sighs> Here we go again. Alright, let's see. Tens. Tens are fun to do. This has to be a two. This has to be a five. This has to be a four. This has to be a three. This has to be a four. This has to be an eight. This is a two, this is a two, and this is a two. Okay. And is that all the help I'm going to get? Well, there won't be anything here, here, here. Um, there won't, won't be here. Or here. Let's see. Okay, so this is the three. Three, two, one, one. So now is it two here or two here? Oh, and this is an eight, so. Oh, that's not necessarily gonna go down like this though. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Um, I kind of feel the two won't be there. It'll be here. Which will be a three. Whoops. Three. And that has to be a one. And then we'll edge that. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that has to... Oops. Nope. That has to be a one. Um, let's see. Etch, etch, etch. So. This should be two. And this should be one. Hmm. And this can't be a thing. Now the question is, okay, there has to be a space between that, so it's probably this, which helps me do five, six, seven, eight, five, six, etch those out. So, and this is done, and this is done, and there can't be one here or here, so we'll chisel those. Uh-oh. That... Oh, it doesn't have to be there. No, it does have to be there. Shoot. Hmm. Oh, wait. No? Yes? No? Hmm. Where did I go wrong today? Well, it could be like this. I suppose. And then that would work. And then that would work. All right, let's check. Two one, five one, four one one, three one one, one one one, four one one, eight one, two three one, two two one, two one one, ten, four five. Three two three two one one two eight three one 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 and six check yes cave painting oh take that DeAndre and that <laughs> oh dear oh dear okay cave painting cave paintings are paintings of prehistoric origin and are associated with modern humans. The earliest cave paintings date back to 40,000 years ago in Spain. 
Material used included brushes, red ochre, and charcoal. Alright. Hmm. Oh, cute! I alternated between emailing my parents and checking adorable bunny videos on my laptop. The shift had finished and people were dispersed around the museum as usual. Hendrik and DeAndre piled the trays to return to the storage closet for another day. While they did, I could hear them chit-chatting in French. I logged off and stretched one arm. I casually twirled the chair around to face the others. DeAndre noticed while Hendrik disappeared down the hall momentarily. All up to date? Yep, fired off a quick response to my folks. They appreciate all of the pictures, but Dad's disappointed I haven't dug up a dinosaur yet. I think that's a completely different field. Oh, DeAndre. Jai Kilke. Uh, sorry. I was going to mention, before I forget again, that we received drawings and thank you letters from the elementary school. Aw, oh, really? How sweet of them. Very. They wrote down their favorite events during the whole tour. Can you guess what got mentioned the most? Here. The Deandretal. Grabbing a stack of papers, Hendrik spread them out like a deck of cards and tapped one of the drawings. DeAndre and I rifled through them while Hendrik translated some of their sentences. One paper caught my eye. It showed a crude humanoid shape with fangs, outstretched arms, and yellow lines all over the face. Oh, come on, I'm not that hairy. Got the goatee all wrong, too. Despite the complaints, DeAndre chuckled and stroked his chin. <laughs> I don't know, I think this is a pretty accurate Deanderthal. <laughs> oh, Hendrik burst out laughing and DeAndre rolled his eyes. <sighs> Hendrik gave a tiny shrug. I wish I was the one who came up with that. Aww. While they chatted, one picture caught my eye. Ah, oh, someone even drew Kyler? At least, I think this is Kyler. I tapped the drawing with the green and purple stick figure. Ah yes, Kyler seemed to have enjoyed himself and he helped the kids a great deal. Kyler's actually a decent guy when he doesn't act like there's a stalactite stuck up his arse. Mm -hmm. DeAndre, language. Oh sorry, stalagmite. Since stalagmites rise from the floor, they'd make more sense than a stalactite. <laughs> DeAndre chuckled at his own display of knowledge, and Hendrik let it slide as he collected the papers. Anyway, thanks for helping me, DeAndre. Later, Hendrik. Mel. DeAndre left, and Hendrik returned the class letters to the corner of the table. Noticing me lingering, Hendrik glanced up. Need something? Oh, I was wondering where Kyler was since we mentioned him. He is usually upstairs reading or in his tent, but I haven't seen him. I think he's still in the cave. What? But isn't it all locked up and stuff? At this time, yes. However, Augustine made an exception. Kyler's currently scouting the cave's interior, since we plan to put out some displays for visitors during the festival next week. Festival? An open event that anyone can join. There'll be more details next Monday, since we'll be needing everyone's help on this one. Sounds fun. You're giving Kyler more responsibilities lately. Or has he done this before? Well, since he helped during the tour, he's proved himself capable outside of the excavation and lab activities. I thought it wouldn't hurt. I'm glad things are sorted out between you two. Same here. Not sure why this year is different from the previous ones, but I'm grateful we're on friendlier terms. Let's hope it stays like that. Anyway, I'll see you around. Later, Melissa. I closed the lab door, then noticed something to my right. On the widest spot of the floor, there was a long sheet of white construction paper spread out. Was someone drawing? Oh, Shoji. I turned the corner, careful of the glass displays, and saw the end of the white paper. Shoji knelt next to it with an art book open beside him. Hey, planning to draw something? Like a sick banner? He glanced up, startled, then relaxed when he realized it was me. I crouched down on the other side of the paper. Yeah. One of the cardboard displays got ruined since it was stored incorrectly. It was the Neanderthal cutout they used to attract visitors during the festival. Their receptionist ordered a new one, but it won't arrive in time. I heard her talk to Professor Dupont and Hendrik about it. Afterwards, I spoke to Hendrik and said I could make a temporary replacement. Uh, it won't be anything amazing. 
And it'll be on flimsy poster paper, but... I thought I could help out a bit. I probably won't be able to do much during the actual event. That was really thoughtful of you. How long will it take? I'll have plenty of free time over the weekend. I think if I can get the majority of the line art done before Monday, it'll be completed for the festival. I still have to figure out how big I should make it. Picking up a pencil, he crawled outward and started making light marks in the paper. He returned to the art book, which was a graphic novel with Neanderthals. Why don't you have someone lie down so you can just outline them? Oh, that could work. A rough outline would help. Now the question was, who to volunteer for the task? <laughs> of course, it's gotta be DeAndre. And I know who would be perfect for this. Shoji simply gave me a blank stare as I briskly walked out of the museum. DeAndre! It wasn't hard to find him. He was casually tossing a frisbee with other students outside. He excused myself once he saw I wanted to talk to him. Hey, gonna join us for a few rounds? Not today. Can I ask you for a favor? Sure, what is it? I need you on your back. <laughs> Melissa, why did you have to say it like that? Uh... Context, Mel. Please. Oh, whoops. Uh, come on. It'll be easier to show you, and you can decide yay or nay. It's just for a few minutes. What's with the paper? I gesture to indicate Shoji's presence. <laughs> Shoji's presence! There we go. Ta-da! Shoji's gonna draw a Neanderthal, but we need someone to trace around. I do not resemble a Neanderthal. It's only for outline purposes. Shoji shyly piped up, then seemed nervous around DeAndre. DeAndre surveyed the layout on the floor, then playfully elbowed me. So this is what you meant when you said you needed me on my back. I rolled my eyes and gave him a gentle shove forward. <laughs> Poor Shoji, he's like, what? What other reason would there be? I don't know. Maybe you want to root for DeAndre, Melissa. <laughs> Kneeling down, DeAndre glanced at the pencil Shoji held. I had no idea you draw. That's pretty cool. Are we talking comic book style or realistic stuff? Um, I'm still finding my own style. I'm probably better at realism. Uh, don't forget your shoes. Huh? Oh, right. DeAndre pulled them off and crawled onto the paper. Before he could lie down, a tune emitted beside Shoji. Shoji glanced at the phone display and stood up. Sorry, I need to take this. It's likely work-related. After an apologe apologetic nod, he disappeared into the back room, answering in French. Ugh. <sighs> DeAndre leaned back as he turned to me. Now what? And what was that about work? Oh, Shoji works at his mom's store. They specialize in old electronics, but he sometimes fixes newer computers, too. I'm not sure how long the conversation will be. Maybe I can outline you. It's easy enough. He glanced down at his hand, which was off the paper. I think I'm too tall for this. Wouldn't it be less work if Shoji had a smaller outline? Uh... Smaller, I guess that means me. Yep. Okay. Oh, true. He does have the weekend, but I'm not sure how much time artists generally need for this. Huh. I take it you don't draw much. I can draw a bush with a happy face, and that's the extent of my ability. Sad face. DeAndre stepped off the paper while I gingerly crawled over it and rolled onto my back. After he picked up the discarded pencil, DeAndre inched closer to my side. What is this for, exactly? Shoji's going to design a cutout that'll be displayed at the end of the driveway for a festival next week. They had an official one, but it got ruined. Then maybe you shouldn't lie down there like a dead body. Here, raise your hand so it looks like you're waving. Like this? Much more natural. I'll get started now. Whoops. The pencil slid out of his grip, and he fumbled before holding it correctly. I gave a mock snort. 
What's wrong? Don't know how to hold anything smaller than a rugby ball? Oh, hush. I've probably doodled in margins more often than you. Therefore, I'm the experienced one here. His hand grazed my hip briefly as he started tracing upward in one smooth motion. Oh no. There was a tickless sensation as the pencil grazed against my bare arm, and I pursed my lips to stifle a giggle. However, it didn't go unnoticed. Oh no. Are you ticklish? I froze, noting the mischievous note in his voice. Uh, I deny everything! No. Really now? I could have sworn you laughed. Oh no! Before I could react, a hand darted to my armpit and tickled me. <laughs> I tried to roll away, but he'd already launched an attack on my stomach. DeAndre, no! <laughs> You're awful! I'm gonna tear the paper! If I <laughs> kick you, it's your own fault! I'll take my chances. It's not like you kicked me before. I curled up in an attempt to protect myself, using my knees as a shield. As he tried to playfully wriggle his fingers past my defenses, he unexpectedly stopped and inched away. Because poor Shoji's probably horrified. Why did... Oh. Oh gosh, that was my second guess. Kyler's like having none of this. <laughs> oh, Kyler's patrolling, trying to catch DeAndre <laughs> all the time. This isn't what it looks like. Um, what he said. I learned to stop questioning the antics going on between you two a long time ago. No wonder we have no hearts with you. He disappeared behind the lab door, and DeAndre rubbed his head. Maybe we should finish up. <laughs> Agreed. I rolled over, clutching my stomach to ease my breathing. It still hurt to exhale. You okay? Yeah. Just don't make me laugh again. I laid back down, and DeAndre finished the tracing without incident. We were fortunate the paper didn't rip. I crawled off to assess the work. There were a few points where the pencil marks were jagged, but overall it was acceptable. Not bad. I glanced over to the room where Shoji had gone, wondering what was taking him. I guess that phone call was super important. Well, I'm sure he'll return soon, but I want to get back to my frisbee game. No problem. Thanks for volunteering, DeAndre. Once he had left, I stood up and gazed at the paper some more, wondering if I should roll it up or leave it here. Moments later, Shoji emerged from the back room, appearing more timid than usual. Oh, you're back. Sorry DeAndre's gone, but we went ahead and did the tracing. I hope you don't mind. No, if anything, that was extremely helpful. Sorry I was pulled away for a few minutes. Was it a long phone call? Not really. I did return, but you two were, um, preoccupied, and I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> anyway, thank you. The outline will come in handy. No problem. I look forward to the finished product. Now to go all day, go and hide myself in the cave. <laughs> That's what I'll do.